This is gonna be my server rack battery build. So this isn't your typical server rack battery uh, cabinet. This I bought secondhand on Marketplace and I paid $250 for this server rack closure. Now this enclosure is a 42U, so it is extremely tall. It's uh, 78 and a half inches tall from ground to top of cabinet. We are roughly about 23 inches wide and we are, I believe it's 35 inches deep, if I can recall. Actually, let's just measure that now. Yep, 35 inches deep. So this is gonna allow me to build a substantial battery bank inside of this cabinet. It has wheels on the bottom. If the wheels are engaged, then it's a 500 pound capacity for the cabinet. If the stabilizers are out, and it's not sitting on the wheels or half sitting on the wheels with the stabilizers out, it's 2,000 pounds. So that's gonna be more than enough to fill up this cabinet. I'm gonna be adding in some pretty cool monitoring devices within the cabinet as well. So look forward to those. I'm not gonna be doing it in this video. I'm still waiting for things to get shipped, but nonetheless. So right on here, um, we have the latch, which I can lock as well. I went and got a key made because it didn't come with the key. So once we open it up, you can see we have more than enough space. So in the cabinet here, uh, I've already mounted up. This is like basically a power bar. Everything plugs into the back and then you get these switches on the front here, which is super nice. So that's the front LED and then that's gonna be the back LED. Um, and then I also have the fans because this has uh, cooling fans in it. So I have a switch for the fans if I want to engage them. I could also uh, run a smart plug on it and have that so that at a certain temperature it'll automatically turn on, but I'm not there yet. Uh, I have my stereo temporarily mounted up here. I'm gonna run my speaker wires in. Uh, I did have my stereo mounted on the ceiling, but this cabinet took up that space, so it gets put in the cabinet as well. Um, so here's the rails for mounting. Um, I have made my own, so I just got pieces of uh, angle iron and cut them, drilled them, and then painted them black. They're a little scuffed because I put a strip of duct tape on there to test slide a battery back, and they worked out fantastic, so I'm going to continue using them moving forward. Um, I've got some more that I cut. The uh, electrical cord for the switches I'm going to wire management it up and then I've already drilled in a plug receiver. So this is on the outside of the cabinet. So I can just plug an extension cord in and run that to my solar equipment or I can use uh, like one of those all power little battery units to run the lights and everything in a power outage or what have you, possibilities are endless. Uh, so that's gonna be the inside. So I mean, I can fill this up with a ton of batteries. Um, next, what I'll show you, it's gonna be pretty difficult to show you with one hand, but I got these bus bars here. Uh, Gavin, I'll leave his uh, YouTube channel in the description. He bought a pair of these and I thought, okay, I can use that. So that's gonna get mounted there. And then I have the Victron Smart Shunt that's gonna mount here. And then you can see the battery lug. The battery cable is gonna get looped up and then come back down and run back. And then I'm gonna put a grommet to run it out so I can run it over to the unit. And then for wire management, for wire management, I've just got this shelving bracket here. You mount this on the wall and then you can put your shelving brackets, but this is gonna work out perfect for zip ties. So I can literally mount that, cut it to length, mount it, and then I can use those holes to zip tie my battery cable. And that's gonna give me some good wire management there. Uh, so next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount this USB uh, receiver here on the side of the cabinet. And I also have a ethernet cable connector so I'm going to drill those in somewhere here um, or maybe up here. i got to figure out where my battery cables exactly are going to run out, but 
can run that out. And then what's neat is all these little holes here, I can use that to have cable um, clamps on. So when I have my cables coming up for my battery, they can clamp on here and then connect into the bus bar. So I'm gonna get these mounted up and I'm gonna mount up my bus bars and uh, I'll be back. And the bus bars went in very nice. So as you can see here, it's all bolted up. Um, on the back side here, I have the two bolts holding the Victron Smart Shunt. This is just holding the shroud for the bus bar. And then that's holding the top isolator for the bus bar. So as you can see here, it's very sturdy in the cabinet. Um, I can still get to my connections for my Victron Smart Shunt. My battery cable is going to loop up behind this rack here and run to the back. And all my battery cables can come up and loop in over, over the front of this. There's going to be enough room that even if I had to run it out here and then loop it in. But I think it's going to run perfectly right in front of this lug here without interfering to get onto the buzz bar itself. So that's really sweet. And then now, when I put this cover over, now all my cables are nicely isolated and the bar's back here. So yeah, that is gonna look beautiful. I might do another coat over top of that. And then now I'm gonna mount the positive on this side of the cabinet. Okay, and now the positive bar is attached so I just, this one was a lot easier, just the two bolts. And then now I can pop my positive cover on. Come on down a little bit. All right there. So there you go. Now I have my positive bar and my negative bar. Now one thing that I did notice um, when I was building this is I realized that you can see where the battery has to come in. I'm not gonna be able to get a battery in here. So between this location and this location, I need to figure out something else to put here to take up the space. And I have something in mind that I need to see if it's gonna work or not, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is right now. Uh, you're gonna to have to wait till the next video. But basically I have an idea to cover this space and I can put batteries up to this. And then from here, I can also put batteries up above and take out the stereo, uh, move this switching board somewhere else. But yeah, so this video is just the opening. Oh, and I still have to mount my USB and my networking cable input output. So let's do that and then I'll wrap this video up. USB and the ethernet cable I might swap those around so that this port here is facing down and this one is still facing this way. So I'm gonna swap those around, but that's an, an idea anyways. Okay, so I haven't been able to stop. Once this started getting rolling, um, I kept adding more stuff. So I thought I would stop, bring you in and show you what I've done. So I've added the surplus battery, which was a, I'm not even gonna say the word out loud but I put it in here myself. I'll put the weight on the screen here. But yeah, I put that in there myself. That was, I had a friend coming over to help me, but he bailed on me. So, and then I have the Pites battery and then, then the Entershare battery. So all those cables will come up. I can use these screws here for holders and then have them run into the bus bar. And then I added these brackets here that have holes in them, which is gonna work out perfect because my negative cable is gonna come up and down and then connect here, connect here, and then turn and run out. And then my positive cable, I have a T-class fuse coming. So I'm gonna run the T-class fuse out and then run the lug up like the negative cable and loop it down, connect it here, connect it on the back side here and then run it across this rail, and then again out with a gland over here. So it is looking sweet. So this is my DIY server rack cabinet. 
Awesome. So now I'm gonna wrap it up for this video. Keep, uh, keep tuned and there'll be more stuff coming soon. Thanks, bye.